As you know, life is not perfect, so we will have to use the quadratic formula on occasion to, have to, to actually calculate our final answers. So let's look at an example that illustrates the use of the quadratic formula. Consider the following reaction. Hydrogen, H2 plus I2, gives you two HIs. Suppose I had one atmosphere of hydrogen and two uh, atmospheres of iodine are placed in a one liter vessel. What are the partial pressures of all species when it comes to equilibrium at 458 degrees C? At that same temperature, the Kp is given to me as 49.7. So given this information, you got one atmosphere and two atmospheres and you have no information about HI, then this will tell us that the reaction must be going to the right, okay, where we're consuming up our H2 and I2 and producing HI. Now notice it says that there's a one liter vessel here. Being that we're in partial pressures, that one liter that does not mean anything to us in this problem. It's important to the experiment, but not important to the calculations in this problem. Now if I was given concentrations, meaning I was given moles and I had a liter vessel, then I would need that because I need to calculate concentrations for the concentration KC. But since we're dealing with KP, atmospheres, not necessary to use that one liter vessel. So what we're going to do is have to set up our ice table. So I have my initial, my change, and my equilibrium. I plug in my initial partial pressures, which are 1 for hydrogen and 2 for iodine, and 0 for HI. So now i got to figure out which way this is going to go. Well, since I only have reactants and no products, we know that this has to be going to the right. Okay, so that means I have negative changes on my reactant side and positive changes on my product side. I need some relationship between these species, so I'll go with the MO coefficients, which means I will have X, H2 consumed, X, I2, and 2X of HI formed. I have to add my initial and change to get my equilibriums, which are going to be 1 minus X for H2, or 2 minus X for I2, and 2x for hi. Now these values are what I'm looking for for my final answers. However, they got x's, so I'm going to have to get rid of the x. How are these three things related? Well, they're related through the kp of this reaction. So I'll set up my kp expression, which is my partial pressure of hi squared, divided by my partial pressure of h2, and my partial pressure of i2. It's equal to 49.7. So now these, you got to realize, are your equilibrium pressures. These are all equilibrium pressures. So I'll plug in the expressions at equilibrium, which in this case is 2x for hi, 2 minus x for i2, and 1 minus x for h2. Plug in for those and then solve for my x. Plug in those values in, you get 2x squared, 1 minus x, and 2 minus x. Now notice that my initial concentration of pressures are different, okay? So this is not going to end up being a perfect square. Since I have two different values, this is going to be a case where I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula to solve for my problem. So I'm going to have to get this expression here into a format that I can use the quadratic formula. What format is that? Well, to solve a quadratic formula, what we're going to have to do is get it into the format of AX squared plus bx plus c gives me zero. Okay, I need everything on one side equal to zero. I need in the format of x squared plus x gives plus a constant gives me zero. So I have to take that expression that I just showed you in the previous slide, rearrange it into this format. Then what I do is I take those coefficients, the a, the b, and the c, and realize that I got to pull in the the sign in front of that b and the sign in front of the c, and plug that, in, plug that into the quadratic formula which is a negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Key point here is, is that the whole expression is divided by 2a. So I take my expression and now I have to multiply both sides by 1 minus x, 2 minus x to get rid of that in the denominator. I do that I get 49.7 time 1 minus x, time 2 minus x is equal to 2x squared. Now I have to use the full method and basically solve for that 1x, 1 minus x, 2 minus x. You may recall that means basically that 1 is going to multiply time 2. 
and one's going to multiply time that minus x. Okay, so that gets me 2, and that gets me a negative x. Then I have to multiply that 2 times that minus x, which gets me now a minus 2x, and do my x, my outside terms, which is minus x minus x, which gets me a plus x squared. So in essence, I end up with 2 minus 3x plus x squared. If you don't recall how to do this, then you need to brush up on your arithmetic. Most of this problem, after we read the problem, is not chemistry anymore. The rest of it's arithmetic. So make sure that you know how to handle the arithmetic to be able to work the problem. So I end up with the 1 times 2, which is 2, a minus x and minus 2x, which is a minus 3x, and minus x times minus x, which is x squared. And then I went ahead on the other side to 2x squared and changed that to 4x squared. Now I have to multiply through by that 49.7 times 2, 49.7 times the negative 3x, 49.7 times the 1x squared, which gets me um, 99.4 minus 149.1x plus 49.7x squared equal to 4x squared. Now what I'm going to do is subtract 4x squared from both sides. That way I can get this equal to 0. And then I'm going to rearrange it into x squared x, uh, no x format. So I'll get 49.7 minus 4 gives me 45.7 x squared, the negative 149.1 x, and then the plus 99.4, all that is equal to 0. So I brought it all to one side, solving for my equation equal to 0. Now I know my a, b, c. Okay. I know that my a is 45.7, my b is a negative 149.1, and my c is a positive 99.4. Realize is that that a term is that coefficient in front of x squared, the b term is that coefficient in front of x, and the c is that coefficient that has no x term. Now take that and you plug it into your quadratic formula. Okay. So we plug those into the quadratic formula. Okay. <clears throat> so we plug in our numbers in. We have our B numbers, our A's and our C's. Continue on with the math. Underneath the radical first I'll do, I'll take the negative 149.1 squared and I get 22230.81. I'll take the 4 times 45.7 times 99.4. I get 1870.32. Continuing on under the radical, I'll take those two numbers and I get 4060.49. Continuing on, I now get, since I've got a negative, a negative 149, that's a positive 149.1 plus or minus 63.72, which is what the square root of the 4060.49 is, divided by 91.4. Now what does the plus or minus mean? Well, that means I have two answers. I will take 149.1 plus 63.72 divided by 91.4, and I will take 149.1 minus 63.72 divided by 91.4, and come up with two answers. If I do that, by doing the subtraction one, I get 85.38 divided by 91.4, which is 0.934. If I do the addition, I got 212.82 divided by 91.4, which is 2.33. So I have two answers. Well, the question is now, which one of these makes sense? Okay, one of them is not going to be realistic. Well, which one is it? Well, if you go back to your expression, okay, we got to plug that X in. Uh, remember on the reactants, we had one atmosphere and two atmospheres. I cannot consume up more than I have to start with. So does either one of these two values give me an unrealistic answer? The answer is yes. Okay, If I only start off with one atmosphere, so I can't consume 2.33 atmospheres. Okay? I can only consume as much as I have. So if I plug that number in to my 2 minus x or my 1 minus x, I'm going to get a negative number, 
which is not realistic because that's telling me I'm consuming up more than I had to start with. So what that means basically is that that basically means that this is not a realistic answer. I cannot use that answer. So the answer must be 0.934 and that's the value that I'm going to use for x. One of them will be realistic, one of them will not be realistic. Now if you choose the proper shift when you're working these problems, it's going to make the, the answer, the, um, your choice a little easier. Okay, let me talk about more about that. Okay, so x equal to 2.33 gives a negative value, the 1 minus x. Therefore, that's not possible. So the only possible answer is it's 0.934. Okay, if you do the shift correctly, okay, you will get a negative and a positive answer, or you may get two positive answers. Okay, if you get a negative and a positive answer, then it's going to be the positive number. If you get two positive numbers, it's going to take be the smaller number. If you do the shift correctly, this is what's going to happen. However, if you neglect shift or do it incorrectly, then you're going to get <clears throat> a positive and a negative number and two negative numbers. In this case, what's going to happen is it's going to be the negative number when you get a negative positive number, or it's going to be the smaller negative number if you get two negative numbers. When I say two negative numbers, say negative one and negative two, Negative 1 is the smaller one. That's the one closer to 0. Okay, It's going to be the smaller one of the two negative numbers. So, bottom line is, okay, you want to carefully select the answer, and it helps if you take do the shift correctly. Okay, Make sure you're shifting right or left and doing your negatives and positives correctly. Because you do, then the numbers flow a little easier. Okay, If you pick the right shift, two positives, smaller positive, negative positive, positive. Okay. Wrong shift, opposite. Okay, If you pick the wrong shift, what's going to happen is you're going to have a negative answer, and then when you plug it into your expression, a negative and negative turns a positive and things work out. So mathematically, if you do choose the wrong shift, if you continue through with the work, you still can get to the correct answer. It just gets a little bit more complex when you're looking at numbers that you may get a little more hesitant and feel like things aren't looking right, Okay, and you start messing around with your numbers and end up doing things and making things incorrect. So bottom line is you want to basically select the proper shift. That makes life easier. That means if you have to do Q, then do Q to decide which way it is. If you have uh, concentrations or pressures of all reactants in products. Getting back to our problem. Okay. Basically, I solve for my partial pressure of hydrogen at equilibrium is 1 minus x, so it would be 1 minus 0.934, which is 0 0.0 atmospheres. Uh, I2 would be 2 minus x, which is 2 minus 0.934, which is 1.07 atmospheres. And for my partial pressure of HI, which is 2x according to our expression, it's 2 times 0.934, which is 1.87 atmospheres. Homework 22 deals with quadratic formula type questions. Now remember as you work in homework 19, 20, 21, 22, that all these are separate. There's going to the right or going to the left using Q, quadratic formula, but on a test they're going to be all mixed up. So you got to make sure you know when to do what on a particular problem. So it's a good thing to study when you're studying for the test is to mix problems up. That way you can make sure you're doing things correctly.